we got a new plasma cutter. Uh, Viva reached out to me and they wanted me to review this little plasma cutter. Um, at first I wasn't really interested. Then I thought, well, you know what? I'm going to be using plasma cutter, so I may as well review it while I'm uh, building this table. So instead of using the plasma cutter I already have, which is um, questionably worse than this one, um, even though it costs more, let's see how good this little guy is. So I, I'm going to unbox it and just get the thing assembled. I will go over at the end um, anything that I run across, but otherwise it's going to make the video really long. Um, it, it assembles as easy as can be. The switch is on the back side. Boop. And I already maxed out the voltage because that's what, uh, or the amps I should say, because that's what we need. So our first test for it is cutting uh, the edges of the fab table that I've been building, in the process of building. So I wanted nice square edges. Um, this was just some random plate that I found in my shop. So I'm going to cut it square, so I'm using a guide, uh, using their little metal fixture thing on the end of their torch, which is really, really handy for this type of thing. Um, and I'm just going to cut all these edges as straight as I possibly can. Well, that looks pretty darn nice. And now I'll just speed through the rest of this. I sped the, this video is obviously sped up if you couldn't tell. Well, I could not ask for any better than that. That stayed very square. Um, it was consistent the whole way. And uh, really the only areas, I don't know if you can really see those, but that's just where I was trying to go as fast as I possibly could. Um, it w and that was where basically I went too fast and I had to kind of come back. And that's why it looks like that. But I'm gonna hit this with a grinder. I still have my scribe line. I stayed just this side of the scribe line so that I could uh, uh, gr grind it back and put a nice you know, straight edge on it with a grinder. It's not gonna take much to clean this up. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. That worked, that turned out pretty good. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you have a really rusty plate, um, not only clean the side you're gonna cut, but it's actually really important to clean the side that you're cutting through. Um, and if you, if you do that, the slag pops right off. If there's a bunch of rust, sometimes the plasma will want to find the easiest way out because the, the rust is actually kind of shielding it. So your cut won't be quite as smooth. So if you're having problems with your cuts where the, it looks like it's wandering around, um, that, that could be, it could be your exit side if there's paint on there or whatever. It's just finding the path of re least resistance, especially on thicker plate. Um, that, that could be a scenario, uh, that, that, you know, may or may not happen to you depending on what you're, what you're doing. So, um, if you're cutting rusty crap and it's thinner, um, you just turn the machine up and it probably won't care as much about the rust. But when you're cutting thicker stuff like this and you have a bunch of rust on the back side, it could make your cut not quite as nice, but that turned out really good. I'm very happy with that. I mounted my plasma cutter underneath my workbench welding table. I just put it right there. Have a nice strap there that I can just keep the ground, you know, just always hooked up. I might find something behind it so that it's not in front. Um, and then if I need to take it somewhere, it, I can just slide it right out. But let's cut some other stuff. Um, we cut the edge of the table and that worked out great. Uh, so let's, that was three eighths. Um, we're gonna cut some 32 thousandths sheet metal now. And this is actually stainless um, and stainless sometimes can have some slag that's really hard to get off. So let's try that real quick. Okay, my favorite part about this thing are these little standoffs. That makes using a, a guide really nice because you're not, you don't have to worry about your height. 
or your side to side. So let's see how straight of a cut we can make. Let's, let's take a look at how much slag is on it. This is stainless. Stainless can be a, kind of a pain with the slag. It doesn't come off as easy usually as normal steel. Let's see how much slag is left. It didn't hardly leave any slag. That's pretty nice. Let's do this side now. Tried to see how fast I could go. Pretty fast. Huh? Okay, I haven't used one of these in forever, so this is like. It's like the ultimate test. Yeah. I don't know, you're going to be in like 20 years. From that. Watch out, it's warm. This is hot. <laughs> it was liquefied around here. <laughs> Not so much here or here, it's <laughs> like here. It's kind of cute. Yeah. It was really fast. Yeah, you can go pretty quick. You want to put a circle out? Or yeah. you want to if add it, parts to it? If it hadn't uh, expanded, I yeah. think it would have actually looked pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, it's because this has this dimple dye. I, I tried dimple dyeing it just to see what it would do. And so it had a lot of weird stresses in it. Ah. I did a swirl. So now we're going to try it out on some aluminum. This is 316 2024 aluminum, which is an aircraft grade aluminum. Um, it's kind of an odd, oddball aluminum. It's really hard, has really strong, like um, almost as strong as steel, actually, tensile wise. Um, but anyway, I, I normally cut this mechanically, um, and so I don't usually use a plasma on it, but it actually worked really well. That was really clean. And now we're going to cut through. So this is a 3 8 plate on top of like an eighth wall uh, rec tube, powder coated on both sides. So I'm gonna cut right through the weld, the plate and the tube uh, all simultaneously and see, see if it can't do it. This is where the pilot arc is uh, a very, very handy feature. That worked pretty good. So we were actually going through two walls. Oops. We were actually going through two walls there. I was going through the tubing, the weld, and powder coating, and a 3 8 piece of plate. So that's not too, that's not too bad. Blast that off. Pretty cool. All right, guys, <laughs> I'm using a DJI action camera. I just started using voice control and I, I must not talk clearly enough for it. Um, I have to yell at it like I'm mad at it. Um, anyway, uh, honest review time on uh, this, this plasma cutter. So this is 50 amp. This is the pilot arc version. It's the only version I would recommend buying. I wouldn't recommend a non-pilot arc. Uh, if you absolutely don't want pilot arc, then absolutely go for it. Um, but for 99% of the time, I think pilot arc is a benefit. I can't even think of a non-benefit um, of, ha of having a non- uh, I can't think of a benefit of having a non-pilot arc, is what I meant to say. Um, okay, so it's 219 for the non-pilot arc, 239 for the pilot arc version. There's a discount code below um, for both, but I, I would recommend the pilot arc, um, especially if you're buying it for a gift, definitely get the pilot arc for, for that. 
uh, person. It's going to be a lot user friendly, especially if you're just using it artistically. Um, you're going to really want the, the pilot arc for that. Um, okay, so and if you're cutting on rusty cars and stuff, pilot arc for sure. So um, I do have a couple complaints about it, but uh, my overall review is 99.9% .9 positive. But I'm going to tell you the negatives because I feel like that's what everyone wants to know about. Um, one, direction manual uh, states air pressure should be at 4.5 psi that's incorrect it should be 45 psi um, so that's mistake number one uh, or criticism number one criticism number two is uh even though now we know 45 psi the gauge doesn't even reference psi at all um, so you're gonna have to convert it to one of the numbers that it does reference so um, i would like them to fix that in the manual i'm going to reach out and see if they it's a, if that's something that they can do um, i'm sure most i'm sure there's a lot of these that are already out there though um, so anyway just just keep that in mind um, second thing their hose clamps on in my situation wouldn't even hold pressure um, i needed to i had to replace them um, they're the hose clamps for they go from the regulator to the uh, machine itself it's just a short piece of hose um, that uh, I had to replace those that I couldn't get them to tighten up enough to hold pressure and then uh, and then they just strip out so um, that's my other complaint those are my only complaints with it everything else worked great uh, if you're going to use it as a 110 machine it has that adapter um, just remember that you're not going to be cutting like 3 8 plate very easily if you're running it on 110 it does cut the the range down a little bit so just keep that in mind um but uh if you're just doing stainless or even this aluminum and stuff it's going to be just fine and if that's all you need it for 110 will be just fine for it so um that worked out good i really like how long the whip is and i like how heavy duty it is this takes a little bit uh to get used to uh the little trigger guard thing um but that's actually really nice because uh, it keeps keeps you from setting this thing down, especially with your welding, welding hood on or whatever, and it just going off on you. So, it, it, and it's easy easy to use, but the first time you use it, it seems kind of awkward, but uh, it's great, it works good. Um, I've cut 14 feet of 3 8 plate, plus everything we just cut a minute ago, the aluminum, the stainless, and all that stuff on the same set of consumables, it's still going fine. So, um, the cut quality on that table, I'll show you real quick, turned out really good. I took uh, one swipe with a sander, and uh, that's what it ended up looking like. Um, so that is really impressive. Um, I'm actually really happy. My, uh, the plasma cutter that I've been using for years that I haven't had to replace, um, I wouldn't have been able to do that cut with it. Um, it's a 50 amp, um, I always forget, Lotus. It's a 50 amp Lotus and it's non-pilot arc and it would have been very, very difficult to do that cut with a non-pilot arc uh, machine. It's because I would have had to, you, you know be really really still with it um for it to maintain a cut um okay so follow those links in the description below uh they're going to save you five percent it's going to sell tell you that it came from me i'm going to try to add um consumable links down there as well uh so check those out well that ended abruptly uh, but definitely just click see more um on down below or maybe it just says more now um like subscribe share it with all your friends and do all that fun stuff and uh thanks for watching we will see you again real soon